Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is day three, Championship Sunday of the MLG 2013 Winter Championship. There are only eight players remaining, all of them Korean, and today we will watch the final jury journey for one of these players as they will walk away with $25,000. I'm DJ Wheats. And I am in control. Thanks for tuning in. This is uh, the first major Hawks tournament. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, since release. It's since like, release. You can, yeah. You get to say it's that? It's fair to say, right. since Tuesday's release, <laughs> this is officially the first Heart of the Storm tournament. Someone gets yeah. there first, I guess. That's for MLG. But I'm really excited about this matchup we have. Actually, all of them are good. I mean, you said there's eight players remaining. They're yeah. all Korean. Uh, kind of goes without saying, any one of these guys could win the tournament. And it's, they're, they're playing at that level right now. It's true. Now, before we actually hop into our first game, a couple of things. Keep in mind, it's still have an opportunity to get yourself that HD pass for $9.99. No ads, access to 1080p. You know the drill. Also, of course, the subscriber-only emoticons. You get to your country flag, Sundance face, all that good you stuff. You get a Sundance face? You get a Sundance face. It's great. All right. It's great. And uh, also, we should take a quick look at the brackets. You know, many of you wondering if you didn't watch the end of last night's program, how things turned out. Well, there you go. One Zerg remaining. That's life. life. Taking on last. You've got MC versus Bomber, which is certain to be an explosive matchup. Flash versus Parting, which is going to be taking place over on the red. And then here at the blue, we've got Rain versus Innovation. Now, of those matches in control, which one would you say you are most excited for? Um... Well, there's so many good storylines. I mean, life is the last Zerg, and of course, in Heart of the Storm, we want to see what these guys are doing with that Zerg race, so that's your best opportunity there. But I, I think it's unavoidable, and it's it's. there's no question why it's on the red stream and the mainstream. Flash parting, that, I don't know that it gets much better than that. I mean, it's actually really close, because Rain Innovation, in my opinion, is I agree. disgustingly good. I agree. So I'm really happy we're commentating that. But the fact that they're going on at the same time is a cruel joke. I, I think they should take place at two different weekends actually but <laughs> rain innovation uh is going to be the sickest but i think you got to go with the names flash party yeah i mean it is uh it is what some people on the internet are calling the final before a potential final i think we've seen a few of those this competition and we still may see a couple more as yeah. the day continues to unfold of course after these initial four best of fives have been played then we have the semi-finals going into a grand final which is uh, which is a best of seven uh, as it as it stands we've got what only we've got three protoss four terran and just a single zerg we started yep. this tournament with 12 terran 10 protoss and 10 zerg so the race distribution obviously at the end here it's act i mean for any other tournament th this yeah. happens it does however just like to uh just like to say I did wear my zerg colored attire you can't fault him for trying for you know for, for a little form? bit of support what is that is uh i didn't did you play enough of the campaign because she turns purple why do you know i i don't creeps purple i like, think it's because well I, there's so many spoilers with it. Spoil so, yeah, I'm there's not somebody right now yet. like scrambling out of bed, like turn it off. Tur Sorry, I didn't. I didn't actually play the campaign enough to know to spoil it, but I'll just stop there. I try to it's make a because line. she actually couldn't find work as the Queen of Blades, so she became the Fruit of the Looms grape. That's good. Yeah, yeah she, she just, wears it well. Yeah, she wears yeah. it well. Um, that makes sense, actually. I like that. Yeah, I haven't seen those guys in a while. The Fruit of Loom, you know, no. fruity guys, but. I like those commercials. It. Let's talk about our two players here, starting with Rain. This guy yeah. has been undoubtedly a beast. You know, when we talk about the long-standing history of some of the ESF players that we've seen in GSL, this guy was probably one of the quickest players to put himself up at that same status. First yeah. place of the OSL Season 1, first place WCS Asia 2012. Of course, some other accolades, but really, I think it's what is in the future for him. You know, what can this guy win coming up here in 2013? You know, I'm, it's it's funny to use this example, I guess, but I remember when uh, MC would win all his tournaments, people were talking about him, they were saying, well, I mean, he'll come and go because he plays such a risky, aggressive style. Uh, when really it was probably his travel that kind of got caught up to him. But I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that there, there's MC on one end of the spectrum, the guy who is in your face, aggressive, and he's got that timed out, that's just his style. And then on the other side, there's Rain, who is just absolutely rock solid. If you watch any of his games, he's certainly willing to do a timing, but you would not call him a timing protoss. You would call him an unstoppable force. In this right. PBT, we will see one gate expand. 
We will maybe see a, maybe a couple weird Stargate things, but for the most sure. part, he wants to get a Nexus down, get more of an economy, and just defend against you and then win the game because he will outlast you. And his opponent is from STX Soul. It is Innovation. And although Innovation doesn't necessarily have any huge uh, accomplishments as far as international competitions, there are still some noteworthy uh, you know, wins for him, including an all-kill of Team 8 uh, during yeah. one of the Pro League Round 2 matches, which an all-kill in any Pro League match is an uh, amazing accomplishment. Yeah. He also made it fairly far in the uh, GSL Season 5, but uh, here he is in the top 8 at MLG, and uh, one of the Terrans that's looking to try to take it home for that race. So we're going to get this one started here in just a moment. This is going to be, of course, uh, a few of his first matches to add to his MLG record. Yeah. So you know, welcome innovation to the uh, to the fun. You're the exactly games. right. And, you know, I'll tell you what, the, the interesting thing here, too, is that you almost put last in this, in this category. Innovation actually a little bit different from that, and I'm starting some of my words. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is he's playing perhaps the best Terran right now. He's, he's not the biggest name. He doesn't have the most accomplishments, but he's playing in monster mode right now. If you, if you yeah. guys have watched his games over the weekend, they have not been close. He has devoured people, and Rain is going to be his biggest test just yet. And that's how it should be in a tournament. Should be. If he beats Rain, his next opponent should be his biggest test. But uh, he's he's playing the best Terran right now, I think. MLG Cloud Kingdom is the map to kick things off here for day three. It's Championship Sunday, and uh, Jeff. Yes. You made it through the weekend. Is yeah. this uh, your first casting of Championship Sunday? It, it certainly is. has an yeah. air of excitement around it every single time. I won't lie. First two days can just be the worst games <laughs> or the longest days, but it doesn't matter. All the excitement happens at the end. Let's introduce our players in the northeast position as the Red Protoss from SKT1. It is rain. In the southwest position, as the Blue Terran from STX Soul, his first MLG, it's Innovation. And the map is going to be Cloud Kingdom. We have seen, well, I've seen Rain play a PBT on here, and it was exactly what I uh, assumed it would be. It was very Colossus based, it was defend, it was put cannons behind your mineral lines because of how Widow Mine drops work. It was use that Mama Core for uh, Photon Overcharge to make sure that if right. you do drop, you're going to take damage on some level so that Medivac either needs to die or return home to repair. It just can't keep dropping you over and over again. That's one of the big issues. It's, it's hard to catch up to that Medivac, but if you can dink yeah. and donk it as best you can, you'll get it to go home. During uh, the MC versus MVP, MC did ask, uh, or excuse me, uh, MC was asked, you know, what do you think about the uh, Medivac and, and not so many words. Um, and, and, you know, he said, hey, as long as I've got the Mothership Core, yep. I I'm okay with that. You you generally agree with that? I mean, do you feel like most Protosses are taking that uh, I think that's absolutely your best approach? answer, at least. Because one of the ways the Medivac punishes you is it capitalizes on you being out of position. So you can use right. Recall to get back to that Nexus when you're in the middle of the map. But probably more uh, applicable to this situation would be, okay, the, the dropship shows up. You should have something. If you don't have something, that you're already in trouble anyways. But then you Photon Overcharge, right-click that Medivac, and no, it's not going to like two-shot it, nor should it, but it's going to hit it enough so that it says, hey, if you want to stick around, you're going to lose that Medivac, right, you're going right. to lose the drop. And Terrans are reluctant to do that, so it's usually a really good turn. Well, uh, I mean, obviously with uh, with the ability to warp in, makes it uh, a little bit easier to defend some things, but uh, I mean, to your point, not only having the Photon Overcharge, but also uh, the Recall. Yeah. There is a lot of, I think the recall is more a last ditch, oh crap, I yeah. really have to get back. Photon Overcharge can take care of quite a bit without having a whole lot there. So anyway, we do have double gas going down for rain. Um, Cybernetics Core has already been started. Keep it in mind, both his double gas are only occupied by two probes. And this is something that we saw in the latter half of, of Wings of Liberty, sort of optimize the uh, gas intake for the Protoss without really cutting into uh, mineral intake. And over here for Innovation, we've got the first add-on, which is going to be a reactor here on the barracks. Yeah, that's a little bit interesting. There's uh, no Reaper out on the map, which is kind of where you see these gas openings go. He's still mining from said gas. Um, so I do anticipate like a factory, and he's just going to churn out those Widow Mines, because the right. Widow Mines are, and part of what, what Terrans have kind of discovered, they're great aggressively, but they're also really good defensively. You don't want to have an army of Widow Mines, that looks ridiculous, but what you do want to have is a couple. So if it is a Void Ray all-in, if it is an Oracle, 
that Widowmine can get up, pop it off, and then all of a sudden the Protoss player is like, wait a second, I want a tech path that now seems pretty terrifying to kind of pursue. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some very cool usage of uh, the Widow Mines. Even, even uh, in TVPs, we've been seeing also in TVTs sort of those quick medevacs in, trying to drop them inside the base of an opponent, uh, you know, right at that ramp or yep. right, obviously, in the mineral line. Uh, but I think that we really are starting to see the beginning of controlling space properly and getting that little bit of extra vision. Uh, it just becomes such a, a, a pain in the ass to deal with. And you know, the way Terrans are using it is pretty awesome. I'm excited to see that. So we do have the Robo going down, and it is or the vision of that is blocked by Rain. Just two sentries on the top. Got a small Marine Force moving out here while the Command Center is finishing up. And uh, excuse me, Innovation right behind that, also getting a Starport as the first Widow Mines begin to pop. Ooh. We actually have a hallucinated oracle. This is sending Tran uh, just awesome. amazing misinformation. He wants this to be seen, so he's going right down the middle of the map. That might be a little bit too obvious. And actually, unfortunate for him, the uh, tower's not occupied. So this won't be seen until it makes its way into the base, and at which time there'll be nothing there as well. Maybe it's hoping to see a widow mine or two, actually. It's just going to end up a scout, but it's a cool idea. I like the idea. These Marines are going to sh um, kind of shimmy their way over here, and with that Mamacore coming out as early as it did, it has a photon overcharge. There's three sentries. You are not going to crack that rain nut now. Yeah, he uh, might give it a shot. Hallucinated Oracle still like, hey, guys, over here, yeah. guys, over. And the probe's immediately going to get probe, uh, pulled from the Nexus. And there is that uh, forward Widow Mine, which makes it really hard. But of course, the Photon Overcharge coming in, and that forces the Marines to get out of there. And uh, yeah, I do like the, the concept of the Hallucinated uh, Oracle. Of course, no one in the right mind is going to fall for an oracle that actually flies in the middle right. line and goes, hey, there's I a bunch of it. Oh, let me go <laughs> check over here. It's like, no, never will anyone say that. But in a different game, it would be so cool if there's yeah. like a missile turret there, exactly. a couple of Marines. The oracle's like, well, it's like, I guess oh, no. I won't do it. Yeah. yeah, whoa. I'll go away for now. And then, you know, oh. the Terran player thinks there's no Robo, and all of a sudden, Claw starts showing up. Yeah, the drop gets attempted back there. Only 13 damage taken on it. Nice reaction from Innovation. But, I mean, I, w I want you guys out there to pay attention to how Rain plays PvT because it's inspiring to watch. You'll notice Vision, Observer at the top, looking for drops, Stalkers in proper position, Mamacore uh, positioned between the two next yeah. eyes so that it can get to either one to do the Photon Overcharge. Sentries at the front, very minimalistic about units. This is not an attack force. The only thing I could see Rain improving upon with this would be... Oh, another drop there in the back of the mineral line. Just going to pick up and leave. Would be a, a probe out on the map dropping pylons, kind of watching the tower, that kind of thing. But he'll get around to it, I right. promise you. Yeah, I mean, he's starting to uh, get as much vision as he can. Take care of these drops quite well. There's a, a boost and a pickup. Oh. It almost grabs it thanks to that photon overcharge, but he will get out of there. Six Marines still live to see another day. And we have the robotics bay about ready to complete. So as you mentioned, Rain going with pretty much uh, what he knows and is very familiar with. Yep. And as we look at innovation side, you know, he is focusing primarily on that uh, bio mine, or at least the start of it, configuration. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what, what you're looking at right now is Rain's build. Uh, I saw him do this three or four times in his series against Jokshi. So he's, he's very much so a one forge, robo colossus kind of guy, map vision. I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I've, I've, I've told you what this This is it. This is Rain's PVT. So we're going to see a lot of this in this series. There's that Twilight Council going down as well. That's, that's for Blink. Blink a big deal because the speed medevac allows for the Terran to usually retain a lot of those medevacs yeah. and get them out of there. It used to be charge. Charge what we did. But now the medevacs are a point of emphasis for Protoss and PVT. And that's where we're going to see Rain try to key in on innovation. We've got a attack coming in here from innovation. Very well uh, strategized here as he sends two medevacs up to the top part of the map. However, Rain certainly has the ability to uh, oh, that spot pylon. that. And there is a very, very quick reaction. But most of the army actually inside, well, Stalkers will blink up. They do prevent those medevacs from going into the main base. They might pick up a pylon, but that, yeah. that well, group we, is still actually going after it. That pylon. I love it. We're going to yep. actually have a little bit of an engagement here. Of course, those two go down. There's no range in this class, so it has to be careful. But the Terran is terrifying. It's going to get the heck out of there with what it has left. That pylon is, you know, uh, if you do like a Word document, that clip thing that comes up. It's like, hey, would you like me to write you? It looks yeah. like you're writing a letter. This is uh, you paying 100 minerals for that clip that says, it looks like a drop's coming out <laughs> your face. And 
you will pay 100 minerals every single, like this pylon dies, guess what? Another one's going right there pretty soon. Yeah, and he was able to oh, well, obviously medevac. control that space. And then lose medevac does go down. Control that space initially with the observer, then moved it out to the fourth, dropped the pylon. Yep. So kind of extending his vision as he begins to take control of the map. Now, innovation starting to move out. Yeah. You see this Bioforce uh, is getting closer and closer to Rain, but Rain himself now with uh, extended thermal lance. And uh, I don't know if he has, char no, no charge quite yet but here. Oh, uh, maybe extending some up too much. Not a lot of anti-air here. It's only four Vikings and the engagement starting to swing in favor of our Protoss player, but he did not anticipate the entire army being out here. Innovation's doing something that I absolutely love. I'll talk about that in a second, because it looks like Rain might be fighting for his life. That Terran is actually stemming forward. There's no force to push on overcharge. It does go down. Warp in behind. It's a drop. He needs to get out of here. The Zealots don't have charge. There's not a lot of stalkers here, but this last Colossus might go down. Innovation is just kind of oh. finding himself maybe winning right now. He's like, wait a second. Are you just kind of dead? No, he's not. That Nexus will eventually get them out of here. But with all the Colossus gone, Innovation has scored a big win. He really has. I mean, three Colossus in total, I believe, did go down in that engagement. There were a few units inside the main for Rain that he had to get back out there. Photon Overcharge certainly helping him in that situation. But maybe the initial engagement that led to this point was what the big problem was. And there's a pickup, a quick launch into the main base. He can pick up and go right back out and then attack at the front as well. Rain anticipates this, warps in at the front to make sure any units aren't going to be able to slip past the defenses there. And he takes care of the units inside the main. Still a few left over here at the natural, but those will be cleaned up nicely. And innovation is oh. probably going to... Oh, another drop in the back. Rain just so on top of things. Immediate warp in. One medevac oh. goes down. And man, Innovation continuing to send units, but I think that Rain is going to hold this off uh, yeah. in the end. He's going to hold it off, but he's falling behind in supply. He's not building on any that kind of Colossus third. count at all, so he's out of AoE. We're going to have one Colossus step out right now, but I'll tell you what, a Dark Shrine is finished. And if there was ever a time to come back, Wheat, you... Protoss, well, I mean, well, when I said you, I mean Zerg, Protoss, right. and Terran all know what the Dark Templar can do. It's just a question of affording it. And as I say that, I did that cash thing where I said it before I looked. He actually had 500 gas. So he can totally afford it. He can totally <laughs> afford it. <laughs> there however, goes the 3DTs. However, he, uh, oh, there we go. The third put yeah. down. But keep in mind, I mean, the third over here, which is about to get assaulted here by the invisible warriors of rain. He starts to work uh, on those uh, on those SCVs. Uh, Has plenty to scan. One and, scan oh. gets two DTs. This might be a, yeah, that's a huge mistake. You gotta spread them out like that and at least take up two scans. The third is getting sacked, but uh, it's only a matter of time. There we go. And innovation is so on top of it. He actually was putting up a missile trip before because he just kind of was like, you know what? I feel like the only way I could lose this right. is DTs. Right. Another attack at the third pickup at the medevac gets out of there. Rain is going to be able to defend. But we take a look at the income, and uh, you can see Terran at 66, Rain at 53, third base not quite up yet. So, uh, you know, not getting the maximum efficiency out of all of his bases. But yeah. I, at the point in which the third gets up, what I'm worried about, and we don't see no CC, but. Uh, you know, innovation could easily be taking a fourth at this point. Just controlling the space really well yes. and keeping Rain inside his own base. Innovation is playing so damn good. I, there's just no other way to, well, there are other ways to put it, but that's how I'm going to do it. Um, I wanted to say, Innovation's doing this thing that I've been talking about a while in my commentaries of StarCraft 2 that is amazing. He is never leaving the middle of the map. He, th this is the furthest back he's gone, and really it's to right. start up his fourth base, like you had asked. Look for those pylons, make sure no, no more DTs are going to bleed into his economy. But when a Terran's out in the middle of the map, they are denying information, they're sniping observers, they're taking bases ahead of the Protoss. They are in their truest, most pure, dominant form. And it's something that I thought Flash featured really, really I'm, well. I'm glad you brought it up because yeah. I think that's what a lot of people are saying. Is that In fact, a couple of, uh, a couple of community threads popping up like, hey, this kind of looks a little bit like Brood War. Yeah. You know, like yes. it, it's, yes. uh, and, and I think that's awesome. Yes, I, I really do. And I mean, you, we're going to look at this game, and I was going to make the joke later, but I'll do it now. There are no balance complaints to be made. There's an innovation complaint to be made. This guy <laughs> is actually playing in absolute monster mode. Like, he's, he's uh, yeah, okay, he's used the boost to retain a few of his medevacs, oh. but really it's his decision making. The ghosts on the ramp here are going to get under fire. However, uh, uh, no, no target fire. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, the Marines just kind of ghosts took all a the... a lot of damage to light. Those yeah. zealots do not like to face ghosts, actually. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. 
Marines, <laughs> Marines just like said, hey, yeah. take, we'll take all the hits. It's all good. And so we got I thought you. he might lose a couple there, but that is not the case. Good storm. storm. Let's go down to second one. Nice. Now we're doing a lot of damage to those Marines. However, there are still several ghosts, as we mentioned before. Archon is going to go down, and Never we are going to see Rain go in for the battle. Guardian Shield uh, does got go up, but I think Innovation just has far too much. Colossus yeah. easily removed, and GG, Innovation takes game number one. And I'll tell you what, both these players playing absolutely amazing. And Rain did get a couple of his Colossi earlier on picked off, which always kind of put him on that back foot. But even from there, the decision to go Dark Shrine, the of course, the one scan on the two DTs was a bit of a misstep, but that was his only way to get right. back into the game. And then outside that, there was a period of time that we actually said, okay, Colossus, you're going on the back shelf. There's too many Vikings out there. I can't afford Stalkers and Colossus. So I'm going to go charge that Archon in Storm. And that was his best chance. If he was playing a lesser Terran, I think he probably could have crawled his way back into it. But Innovation slammed the door shut with great splits and just amazing macro. Amazing macro indeed. And that is going to be game number one. Going to, of course, Innovation. Now, before we take our quick commercial break, when we come back, it's going to be GSL Whirlwind. Don't forget, uh, you can check out some of the great offers from the partners of MLG 2013 Winter Championship. Here we've got a BenQ offer for you today uh, at the show promo. Visit the BenQ booth, or you can buy online at MLG.2 slash BenQ RLHM. Check out those new monitors. One millisecond response time. Guys, we're going to take a quick break when we return. GSL Whirlwind is the map as the continuation of Rain versus Innovation happens here on Championship Sunday. Don't go away.